I'm going to play a song called A Feast of Friends by the Doors. This was released in 1978. It is part of Jim Morrison's book, a poetry book, called An American Prayer. So I'm going to play it first, and then I will talk about it. Wow, I'm sick of doubt. Live in the light of certain South cruel bindings. The servants have the power. Dog men and their mean women pulling poor blankets over our sailors. I'm sick of dour faces staring at me from the TV tower. I want roses in my garden bower, dig. Royal babies, rubies, must now replace aborted strangers in the mud. These mutants, blood meal for the plant that's plowed. They are waiting to take us into the severed garden. You know how pale and wanton and thrillful comes death in a strange hour, unannounced, unplanned for, like a scaring, over-friendly guest you've brought to bed. Death makes angels of us all and gives us wings where we had shoulders smooth as raven's claws. money, no more fancy dress, this other kingdom seems by far the best, until its other jaw reveals incest, and loose obedience to a vegetable law. I will not go, prefer a feast of friends to a giant family. Okay, so what does this all mean? Well, I have my own opinions about certain phrases in the poem, but there's no way to really pinpoint an overarching meaning. I just don't think there is. There's too many words, too many phrases, too many images to really conjure up something united. But I did look around and I happened to see some things that, you know, people had had written. They interpreted this poem their own way. And so I'll read some of these things and then I'll just give my own opinion about it. All right. So society and authority, the uh, cruel bindings words uh, some say that maybe that's what it meant. It meant like um, these were negative hierarchical influences that were placed on us or the eradication of individuality uh, or even the negative influence that is created because of these things and feeds on itself. And so uh, this makes room for new plants to continue the never-ending cycle. Well, he does say, and loose obedience to a vegetable law. I will not go. Prefer a feast of friends to the giant family. That's one interpretation. Um, Here's another one. Uh, How about this? They're waiting to take us into the severed garden. This refers to the overwhelming influence of society and authority again. Um, And... What occurs is the death and slash abolishment of independent thought and individualism. Yeah, I mean, sure, that that could be a possible meaning for those phrases. And then this person says, although we are fooled to think that this life is far the best, we realize that the truth is the opposite. Conformity makes angels in the eyes of society authority and its evil corruption 
eventually becomes evident. And Jim is saying that he will not conform. Jim was not a conformist. <laughs> he prefers a feast with other nonconformists than to the giant family, which is society or everyone else. Uh, Jim lived the life he wanted to live on his own terms and did what he wanted to do. And his work speaks to that. All right, so uh, one person says that this poem is 100% Nietzschean. It's a Nietzschean philosophy. And Jim speaks as to what Nietzsche referred to as the overman or the I, I guess that's the overman, but um, like no more money, no more fancy dress. This kingdom seems by far the best until its other jaw reveals incest and loose obedience to a vegetable law. In other words, this is an existentialist thing. Um, instead of living for this world we place such a high value on and strive toward this afterlife, when in reality... It's other jaw or religious institutions being corrupt, like incestual and hypocritical. Nietzsche really had no use for religion. He even invented the phrase, God is dead. But God is dead does not mean literally that God died. It just meant that the people were killing him with their hypocrisy. That's what he meant. All right, so... Uh, another person said Jim Morrison delves into the themes of disillusionment, societal corruption, mortality, and the desire for more authentic existence. I would say that Jim was more of a nihilist than an existentialist. I think he was more about self-destruction. Uh, you know, But an existentialist, I, I don't think they are about self-destruction per se. Existentialist is about existence, living in the moment, living, just living, existing. A nihilist is self-destructive, and Jim was definitely a nihilist. All right, um, another person says, the song begins with the singer expressing a weariness with doubt and a desire to live in a more certain and illuminated state. Jim was probably in this constant <laughs> illuminated state when he was taking peyote or he was drunk. He was drunk most of the time. But he did enjoy peyote. I'm sure he, he dropped acid, but um, peyote was his favorite uh, hallucinogenic drug. Another person says, the song takes a darker turn in the following lines, describing death and its sudden arrival. Uh, Morrison reflects on death's ability to transform individuals and grant them a sense of freedom and transcendence. The phrase, death makes angels of us all and gives us wings where we had shoulders smooth as raven claws. Those are some amazing lines right there. I love that. So he suggests that death can liberate us from the burdens and limitations of life. That is true, but... What if there's an afterlife and, and it's not over yet? I believe in an afterlife. I don't believe that we die and then that's it. I believe there's more to do. We, we take things with us after we leave this earthly plane. All right. Um, the final section explores the rejection of societal norms and expectations. Morrison speaks of a desire to escape from the superficiality and materialism represented by money and fancy dress. That is true. Um, he, Though he made a lot of money, uh, you, you wouldn't think he did by the way he dressed, the way he looked, the way he acted. Um, he didn't act like a rich person. He, he just seemed like anybody else, except he had a really good mind. He had a sharp mind, even when he was drunk. He never, he never really lost his thinking abilities or, you know, I mean, he was a, he was a deep thinker. Sure, he was attractive when he was younger, which he only died at the age of 27 or 28 or something like that, but I think it was 27. And so, uh, but still, he looked a lot older, <laughs> you know, shortly before he died. He looked 
he looked very very old you know just not old old but he looked older than 27 so i think this is one of my favorite songs or poems by the doors because there's just so many images in this and the music the music uh is truly amazing i mean it's it's got power to it and so i really like this and um I don't know if this video helped if you're interested in this kind of thing. I'm interested in a variety of music, and, and so I just happen to like this one quite a bit. Anyway, that's the video, and see ya.